my number three that shaped my sense of style is a movie called Le Samurai from 1967, directed by Jean-Pierre Melville, starring Alain Delon, Francois Perrier, and Natalie Delon. I didn't realize until recently, are Nat- is Natalie Delon related to Alan Delon? Probably. I should look well, that up. Maybe. And, the and I just in the movie. Yeah, maybe. And I just want to say I'm impressed with your French pronunciation. Yeah. I would have tripped up all over that. So great job. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. Quick log line on, from IMDb. After professional hitman Jeff Costello is seen by witnesses, his efforts to provide himself an alibi drive him further into a corner. So this is sort of like a neo noir kind of film. It's a French film. Uh, it's it's really entirely revolves around uh, Alan Delon's character, who is a hitman, like I said, and and everything is sort of all around him. The police is trying to corner him, uh, and he's trying to get out of this mess that he's in. But the plot aside, I think the big showpiece set piece of the movie really is Alan Delon. I think, and in his iciness and his quietness. It's a very quiet movie. And it's one of those movies that sort of sneaks up on you as you watch it. But I'm curious if you'd watched this movie before. Yeah, I'd seen it um, after college. I did a big dive. I think I might have mentioned this in a previous podcast uh, into French uh, French films. And this right. was one of the ones that, that came up then. I hadn't seen it since then, so it's been quite some time. But I liked it at the time, and I liked it a lot on this rewatch as well. It's definitely a uh, very striking and unique film that really sets a template for these lone killer yeah, hitman movies. There's so much in this. And I'm like, oh, wow. I appreciate it actually that a lot more now on this watch. I'm like, oh, wow, they really set the thing of the, you know, the killer or not the killer. The hitman's got a pet and then he right. lives alone and everything's really stark. He doesn't really say a lot like this movie really started a lot of those things. Yeah, no, totally. Um, so the reason why I put this on this list is because I really wanted something from the 60s because I really appreciate that sense of style mid mid century modern is sort of what which sort of is 50s too but a lot of what i'm drawn to at least mm-hmm. from a home furnishing and decor standpoint is very much of that era mm. even though you don't see much of that in this because his apartment is basically yeah, there's nothing in it there's nothing in it except <laughs> yeah, for it's the like cat. a bird cage yeah, for the yeah. bird cage exactly yeah <laughs> it's bad yeah <laughs> but but i think there's something about his steely resolve and the suits, the one suit he wears, the trench coat and, and the and the hat that he wears. It's almost like a uniform, but of course he looks amazing. But there's something about the hard lines and the sleekness of it and how much of a uniform it feels. I think that to mm-hmm. me is very appealing from a style standpoint because A, not many people will be able to carry that and look as good as he does for sure. Right. But there's something internal about how comfortable and confident he is that this is a uniform like this is not bond or any of the other people that we will talk about on this podcast who've you know dressed themselves up for this like this is it's almost his skin and that's that's how confident he is in in this uniform that he wears mm-hmm. um so i think that's something that's always appealed to me i'd seen this actually during the pandemic for the first time and was sort of blown away by mm-hmm. it Maybe there's something about me watching this movie in total isolation that yeah. <laughs> perhaps did a number, yeah. but it stayed with me. And I, I was very happy to revisit it uh, this time for the podcast as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I think I could definitely see it because this film so much about loneliness and yeah. isolation, how it would have really landed in a certain way in the uh, during the pandemic. And I, I definitely agree with you about the, the uniform piece. I think that's, again, where he... Is it, he he has to embody this life of uh, of a hitman and does it yeah. sound it sort of looks like he has no life other than that that is his identity or at least all that we know mm-hmm. in this film and the the clothes and that awesome trench coat and that cool hat that he wears is how he transforms into this version of himself that can now go out there and and kill uh for for hire yeah. um so when he's in his apartment alone sort of waiting for the the next job to come in he's just sort of lying there in the bed uh, it doesn't have the trench coat on, doesn't have the hat on. And maybe he needs to kind of put those things on as a uniform, like you said, to then go out there and 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 kill um, yeah. and do what he has to do. Yeah, yeah. And obviously not to endorse or draw the parallel that just, you know, you're, you're, you're cool because you're killing. Of course not. That's not the message I want to send or that's not the message I'm taking from this. But, but yeah, I think the other reason as you listen to the rest of my list, mm-hmm. I wanted a character who is darker. 
Because mm-hmm. I think in my mind, I always associate fashion or style and coolness with people who are extroverted, you know, who are fun to be around mm-hmm. or they're intelligent or they're going out there and doing something cool with with their lives. And I wanted a little bit of a contrast to that perception. Mm. This is a very internal, darker person. Uh, but those people can also be cool in their own way. There's something mysterious about them, I think. And maybe... I don't know what that says about me, but I am drawn to that. Somebody who is a little bit darker and mysterious. I'm not that way for sure. (laughs) (laughs) So there's something appealing about that, I think. Yeah, hitmen can be really cool. I mean, there's countless cool hitmen in movies. Um, And then definitely a big influence. uh, John Woo was heavily influenced by this film for most of his filmography. And there's a movie of his, my favorite movie of his, The Killer, is about also a hitman, Chai yeah. and Fat, one of the coolest actors ever, um, sort of playing the, the the kind of the main lead role, like in this film. Um, and you, you do think it's cool. Like, they're cool, but obviously they do things that you don't condone. Yeah. Um, but there's something about that. And that is a lot of style and is a lot about how they dress um, in these in these movies. And it, maybe this film was the genesis of that, too. I don't know. Of like a stylish hitman. For that, maybe they were more sort of like downtrodden you know, sort of dirty gangster types um, yeah. instead of like this very cool, slick, fashionable, stylish guy who goes around and kills people. Um, yeah, it's I don't possible. know. M- maybe this was the Genesis. I I don't, I just know that John Woo in particular was really heavily influenced by this film. It's one of his favorites. I did not know that, but that makes sense. Um, the last thing I'd mention is the only bit of sort of outside apartment space that you see other than sort of cityscapes and such is this really cool jazz club where he goes where one of the women who's sort of embroiled in the whole plot is Mm -hmm. a piano player and a jazz singer and that bar just looks so cool so Uh, cool yeah so cool and that that and also the piano singer's apartment like those are prime modern mid-century modern 60s cool places but they're also understated like this is not the pink panther movies where everything is loud and pink i love those too (laughs) but there's something very understated cool and you could almost argue that that setup could be from any time it looks Mm -hmm. sort of timeless no definitely yeah especially her apartment when he when he goes back to to the singer's apartment and you see that you're like whoa like it doesn't it looks real as in like it looks organic like she could live there but maybe that's just because they're in France and French people are more stylish or something that because yeah. it is like almost unbelievable how cool that place looks. Um, but you know, you just sort of like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Like she, this cool nightclub singer has a very cool, uh, fashionable and stylish apartment. Yeah. And it's intentional to his life, right? Like look at his life, which is internal and right. isolated and whatever he's doing, living alone with a bird, uh, so I think it's in, that's the only pop of color we see really in the entire movie is mm-hmm. her apartment. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the uh, she has more life, at least, yeah. than, than he does for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.